no matter how productive you are each day, no matter how many self love affirmations you do each day, if you still allow people to disrespect you, to put you down in very subtle ways, to make you feel obligated, guilt tripped, manipulated, and all these things, you are still not truly loving yourself. have to be honest here, January was a fairly sucky month for me, even though I tried my very best to enter the year with a very positive intention. I was hoping that a series of positive wins would unfold for me, but instead, I ended up cutting a lot of people out of my life, so there was not much emotional support when I first launched this YouTube channel. And no matter where I went outside of the house, the bus, trains, beaches, and everywhere would still be packed, and it felt like I just couldn't find a solution to cure my burnout. The very first comment that I saw after putting my blood, sweat and tear into my work since August was you should just stop and do OnlyFans, you'll make more money. Now objectively, I told myself to just ignore this, delete the comments and go about your day. And that's exactly what I did. Although I couldn't help but felt really insulted by the fact that people just couldn't care less about effort, but all they saw me as is a sexual object. And the reason why this was so triggering is because I was also reminded this constantly by a good friend who I thought gave me constructive advice. But when I really see things for how it is now. It was just people's way of projecting their insecurities onto me. That was fine. It wasn't a big deal. Until the 17th of January, my phone was hacked and unfortunately, a bunch of people that I was in a tight community with received very nasty messages from my phone number. It was mentally exhausting, editing many hours throughout the day, but still having these weirdness pop up out of nowhere. As a result of this, I was pretty much forced into a situation where I have to initiate contact and apologize for the things that I didn't do and tolerate being told that I was being disrespectful for choosing to prioritize my well-being. And that's when it finally started to fully click. It was time for me to truly take ownership of my life and be responsible for every single area that was causing me distress. So I started doing a full mental decluttering. I looked back at every single subtle situation where I was neglecting myself but didn't even realize it. The deal breaker for me was probably on the evening where I was at Collaroy Beach enjoying a $20 plate of pasta by myself after filming my beach clip. Yet I had to go to a meeting on that night and I ended up being there half an hour late in order to spend the extra time to really enjoy my meal without rushing. I was then asked, is there a good reason why you came late? There has to be a good reason for it. And that was the night I truly understood the meaning of self-love. I asked myself why I had to ever justify to anyone why I wanted to spend the evening for myself. If I was not getting paid to do certain things, if that certain thing did not make me happier, why am I sacrificing my own happiness to make others feel validated. Enough is enough and that's why if you guys are feeling tired, exhausted, burnt out, overwhelmed, stuck, and lost. I can assure you that for many times we say to ourselves, I can't be bothered to do anything today. We are not bad people that just wants to waste our life lying down around all day long. It's because we are overwhelmed by the compounded bull that has happened over and over and over again to us that we don't really know how to internalize this anxiety besides just doing nothing. And here is what you're going to do to slowly scrub away this pain and really unstuck yourself when you feel like doing nothing. One, you're going to give yourself permission to remove all sources of anxiety without justifying your reasons to anyone. Now this was one of the phrases that I started internalizing from Dylan James affirmation tracks. You make self-honoring decisions and walk away from any circumstances where you're not properly valued and you don't backtrack on those decisions. At first that phrase didn't really hit me until recently that I started to realize the importance of making a firm standing for your boundaries and really sticking to it. The thing is I was always normal Normalizing the habit of, oh, this person must receive my reply now, otherwise they'll feel like I'm not being committed. Oh, this person must know that I'm fully committed and I'm gonna work very hard to earn everyone's validation because if I don't do it, people will see me as a bad person. But I'm feeling anxious opening up my phone. I'm feeling anxious reading text that I don't want to read. But let's just shove down this feeling because it's normal. We're not always supposed to feel at peace with ourselves because anxiety is a normal part of my life. And I finally decided that I wasn't going to normalize anxiety anymore. Anymore. I want you to understand that if you feel like you've come to a point in your life where you just don't have the capacity to respond, to engage, to even stay in touch with certain people that just drain you, you are not a bad person for loving yourself and choosing to prioritize your well-being first. Because at the end of the day, once you set that example, other people have to reflect the examples that you set for yourself. Two, let your exhaustion run its course, even if it takes a significant amount of time. So this year, I managed to ruin the battery 
of my MacBook Air right in January. And it was a very stressful situation because I needed to edit. During the times where I no longer had the battery to charge my MacBook, I still had other sources of charges, except those charges were not powerful at all. So after one hour, my MacBook would still be at 7%. And after two hours, my MacBook would be at 15%. And that just reminds me of us humans. When we are completely depleted, drained and exhausted, our charging rate is going to be like that. After one day of rest, we may only feel better by 20%. And the more I was trying to work on my MacBook while the laptop was charging, the slower the charging became. And it felt really frustrating every time the battery was going to go off again, simply because I just wouldn't let my MacBook rest. And that's the same with our mind, body and soul. You must love yourself enough to prioritize healing yourself because you only have one body, one mind and one soul. And you might as well nurture it so that it's healthy and you are open to experiencing the best things in your life. Three, don't force your moonshot goals, but focus on the minuscule tasks that you can accomplish every day. Now, this is one of my favorite steps because the minuscule tasks that you accomplish build your new sense of identity. So even though I was very tempted to go back and focus on the goal of, I want to get a million views. I want this amount of subscribers. Instead of focusing my awareness on these things, I then focus on the mundane things that I could easily do every single day consistently that makes me feel like a legit person. And those minuscule things are surprisingly things like washing the dishes successfully every day. And of course you can say, well duh, everybody has to wash the dishes. But it's not just about washing the dishes, it's about how you approach the action. I then also apply this to how I make desserts, how I cook, and also how I eat. Now honestly, eating is something that we all do. And it's not just about what you eat, but it's about how you eat it. So I try to associate as much positive feelings as I can for every single bite that I take. For those that normalize eating any random thing without choosing oh I really really want this I want you to really come back and ask yourself if I truly loved me would I eat food this way will I see food this way will I appreciate food this way believe it or not this very small action in itself has really increased my self-esteem now this also applies the same with just spending 15 minutes on your yoga mat to just lie down and stretch rather than forcing yourself to do some really high intensity workout or deadlift 50 kilograms to feel good about yourself things like simple breath work those little actions go such a long way in building a new identity for yourself because it's such an easy practice it doesn't take a lot of effort regardless of how tired you are and also the final things I want to emphasize after you've recovered is taking a shower brushing your teeth the very normal things but also putting makeup on for yourself back in the days I used to only put makeup on when I'm going out to see a friend and I would put more effort in my makeup if I think that person is important but to put makeup on just for myself what was that for these days I try to dress up for myself. I never wear foundation unless I'm filming or going out to an important event. But just the act of wearing a bit of brows, wearing a bit of lips and seeing yourself pretty, that is enough for you to really feel energized throughout the day. Because when you look into the mirror, you're not thinking to yourself, oh my god, I look so exhausted today. You're actually thinking thoughts like, oh, this lip color actually suits me. This eyeshadow color looks really good on me. And the more you repeat that practice, the more self-love you feel and the more energized you'll also feel throughout the day. Four, recognize your wins and celebrate them as often as you can. So when I first got myself back on track emotionally, I started noticing a lot of things that I was doing successfully. And one of those things were hitting my deadlines for my YouTube channel. Since I'm a one man band today, there is no boss telling me when I have to get my work done and what kind of work I have to get done. Everything is all reliant on me. And the more I treat myself very seriously with each thing that needs to be done for that day, the more self-respect I feel. For example, if I was editing something that is long and tricky to do. I have to break down the processes each day. And it's also important that I don't overdo something per day as well. So like eating, I would also portion out my tasks so that I feel balanced every day working on these tasks. And I never feel overwhelmed or stressed when I can't meet the deadline. So when I finish one whole video and upload it onto YouTube and it's 20 minutes long, I celebrate the fact that, oh my God, you really did it. Or even things like, congratulations, you filmed a successful footage today. And then you multiply this in every area Area of your life such as congratulations today you did the seven kilometers walk and this also goes the same for congratulations you learned how to cook dobogi and it tastes really good so now I feel empowered that whatever I want to eat I can just make it myself so the more positive feedback loop you feed into yourself the more you validate the fact that you are worthy without any external praises you are responsible for praising your own progress so even though I don't have Instagram whatsapp Facebook LinkedIn or anywhere to post a story or a reel 
I still feel pretty much validated within myself every day. And that sense of validation then reflects on the quality of work I post on my YouTube channel. And also, I have one subscriber named Precious Pink or Rachel, and she leaves these really great comments on all of my long form videos from day one till right now. And I feel so appreciative that my work is something that one person could consistently provide constructive and really good feedback for. So thank you, Rachel, and everybody else who leaves a comment on my YouTube because I already feel good that I have content to share with you, but it feels 10 times better to know that people resonate with the content and it's actually making a difference to you guys. Five, take your time to slowly adapt to the new you. Now, one of the mistakes that I made after launching this YouTube channel is that I was in a rush to be somewhere, even though I knew that I shouldn't have to spend hours checking my analytics. But after one of my long form videos did very well, I started getting obsessed with understanding how the algorithm works. And I also got into this cycle of looking at videos on how to go viral on YouTube. And those videos would give you feedbacks about how to adjust your thumbnails, how to adjust the little settings on your YouTube privacy, how to think of the best hook. And there was a period for about one to two weeks where I was very obsessed with just leveling up my hook, leveling up my thumbnails, leveling up my titles. And you know what that did to me? It actually got me less views and less traction initially. And that's because I wasn't letting myself naturally grow in the process. So now that I'm aware of this, instead of asking myself, how can I go viral overnight? I now ask myself every day, how can I build the skill sets each and every day to sustain this quality of work over a long period? period of time? And how can I manage myself each day to always be emotionally stable, to have mental clarity, to feel fit and strong so that my content reflects the quality of the person that I'm becoming every day. And as a result, I start to feel much more high value in the process. The thing with views is that it's very volatile and you just never really know what people will tune into at the time. But what you're solely responsible for is how you manage your mind, how you manage your perspective, how you manage your emotions so that no matter what is showing you on the outside, you feel stable, you feel congruent to the best version of you. And that comes with taking your time. I still remember at the end of January, I posted my first long form video and it got like three or eight views on the first few days. And I felt resentful until I saw Rachel or Precious Pink's comment that I started to feel validated that, oh, actually, it's not that the content is not good. It's just that it's not the right time for you to get exposure yet. And so when I even observed myself feeling good, feeling released, feeling like it's okay, the work is submitted, just let it be. The views actually go up based on how good I feel about myself as well, even though the work is done and I'm literally doing nothing but regulating my emotions. Now this goes the same with things like weight loss. Instead of thinking to yourself, how can I lose 10 kilograms right now within the next 10 days? Focus on asking yourself things like, how can I build the resilience, the momentum and sustain the mindset of somebody who could walk seven kilometers once every week, who could spend 50 minutes on the yoga mat stretching just for herself, who can look at herself in the mirror every day and tell her Herself that she's beautiful regardless of what the scale says. I find that I've become so much happier every day by just asking myself the right questions. And it's such an obvious thing that we overlook because the minute I ask myself again, what makes this video viral? When does my video spike up? When are my audiences online? How can I change my thumbnails? It makes me so anxious and rigid that I would even procrastinate sometimes here and there. But the minute I ask myself, okay, this work is done. How can I elevate my energy in the next video? I then become happier and feel inspired to do more work without even feeling burnt out. So I want you to really get yourself in that positive momentum of feeling energized. And the next thing you realize is that you're no longer stuck. You've made so much progress and you don't even remember the last time you told yourself, I don't feel like doing anything. Now the final point, which is really, really crucial for your long-term growth is to stay in your new identity. Meaning that if you already see yourself as the person who would go on your yoga mat and stretch for 15 minutes for the sake of loving yourself, for the sake of taking care of yourself, then you want to stay there. You want to make sure that you set the firm boundaries and do not let any toxicity enter your life. The mistake that I made that severely destroyed my self-esteem was that I was already seeing myself as a person who does successful beach clips. I travel five to six hours a day at that time to get 30 seconds worth of footages. And I see myself as a successful person who was driven. But because I was starting to nail that aspect of my life, I felt generous and started checking my text messages, started to respond 
respond to messages that I didn't want to respond to at that time because I felt generous. I felt like I'm already becoming successful so these people deserve kindness. And of course everybody deserves acts of kindness but not the extent of your self-sacrifice. And even if you feel a tinge of anxiety by just engaging in that reality or that action, then that is self-sacrifice. Do not let anybody make you feel a tinge of anxiety, a tinge of worry, a tinge of stress. Because if you truly love yourself, you're not going to focus on how you can make the other person change. You're going to focus on how you can become the change by blocking out the things that don't resonate with you. So staying in your new identity is not just about being disciplined with your self-love practices. It's about being disciplined with your boundaries. That is so important. No matter how productive you are each day, no matter how many self-love affirmations you do each day, if you still allow people to disrespect you, to put you down in very subtle ways, to make you feel obligated, guilt tripped, manipulated and all these things, you are still not truly loving yourself. And honestly, from my very personal experience, the key to lasting success is consistency in your self-love practices. Not just consistency in your video editing, not just consistency in your work hours, it's consistency in how much you love yourself. The more you love yourself, the more balance you will have in your life. And that balance is what creates the momentum for you to really achieve your success and sustain it long term. If you can just bottom line, always prioritize how you feel at the forefront of everything, every area of your life will flourish. And I promise you that because I've seen it and experienced it so many times. So this is how you're going to unstuck yourself when you feel like doing nothing. Again, to recap this video, in very rare cases, you don't feel like doing anything because you're genuinely a lazy and unmotivated person. But a lot of times you don't feel like doing anything because you are overwhelmed. You've compounded too many times of bullshit circumstances that you don't know what is safe and what the safe step is to take from here onwards. The safest steps you can take is the step that leads to self love. Regardless if that means deleting your social media, not checking your phone, disengaging with toxic people, stop seeking validation from environments that don't truly value you. And I guarantee that things will get better for you. So if you guys like this video, please feel free to subscribe and let me know which kind of videos you want to see. Also leave a comment down below to let us know if you guys like this video or not. I'm very excited to grow with you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.